Hello, my name is Leroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. Uh, in this episode here, what I'm going to do is, as you see here, as I'm going to point out some of the evidence I've uncovered and the distraction shots in the JFK assassination. Now, as I point out in my other videos and my research and in my books, there was 13 shots fired that day. <clears throat> But people claim there was a still, you know, the only three shots and stuff like that. And some people claim there was four or five. Okay. But see, one thing that ever, I never did understand when I was uh, working on this case was there was a lot of evidence that was in front of the public's eye for 50 plus years that was overlooked. And it just never made no sense to me, you know, of how they couldn't find this years ago. Especially when people claim that they analyzed the films and they went over the films and stuff like that, and there's all this evidence out, you know, uh, that's actually in these images and films. Okay, just like we're gonna, I'm gonna pull this up right here. Okay, but before we pull this up, I'm gonna show some evidence here. Okay, these are frames from the Sapruder film. Okay, this is frame 399, which shows a shot, a distraction shot, strike in the side of the concrete. Of the manhole cover because we can see the impact right here and a piece of concrete flying up and that's frame 399 frame 401 again we see another impact to the top corner of the concrete or manhole cover with another piece of concrete flying up in the air then in frame 402 we see the bullet ricocheting upward okay this is seen in a Spruder film and then we're going to go into the Spruder film. This is frame 413. We see a shot take place and make contact in the grass area. And then frame 414 of the Spruder film again. We see another shot being taken place. And it strikes right here in the grass area as well. And then in frame 416 of the Spruder film. We see another shot strike the sign on the lamppost and ricocheting off at the same time. Now this is seen in the Sapruder film alone. Okay, this is uh, seen in the Sapruder film alone. Now, when we look at that manhole cover, even today, okay, which is right here, we can see both bullet holes today. Now this image was taken in 2013, a friend take it, took it for me. Okay, and as you see here, that bullet hole right here on the side of the concrete of the manhole cover is still seen. And the bullet hole on the top corner of the manhole cover is still seen. Now, when I seen this in the Sapruder film, when I first seen these shots take place in the Sapruder film, I contacted a friend that lived in Dallas and, you know, talked to him about it and said, hey, you know, I need you to take a look at a location for me. He goes, why? And I said, well, from what can be seen in the Sapruder film, now this is, remember, this is before I even knew there were shots even taken there. And I said, well, you know, in a Spruder film, I see two strikes and a bullet ricocheting upward by this manhole cover. I gave him the exact locations of where to look at, the exact uh, location of the manhole cover. And uh, he says, well, there was claims that there was a shot maybe hit there by some eyewitnesses. And I said, well, go take a look at it for me. So he took a look at it for me, took an image of it for me, you know, and we got back on the phone. He sent me the images and stuff, and he says, you know, uh, what you found is very compelling because what you found, I was always talking to some people, and I was, you know, going over some stuff myself, and said, there was more than eyewitnesses claiming that there was shots being fired and, you know, something hitting around that manhole cover. So after I got done looking at the image and I start lining up in the locations that we've seen in Spruder film of where these bullets make contact with exactly to these bullet holes that we see today. Now, before I even brought that information out, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I could find more evidence to pile on top of that. Just like here, we see an image of Secret Service agents, police officers, and everything else recovering a bullet that's lying in the grass because there's an image of that bullet <clears throat> excuse me, as you see here, okay, the Secret Service agent's going down, he's picking up that bullet's lying in the grass area right there, and the manhole cover's just right beside them, just like I'll show you here, in this image here, we can see the tip of the bullet down here, and the manhole cover is right here, the manhole is right here, 
and we see him picking up that bullet cape, that bullet that's laying in the grass there. Then I said, well, okay, now we have this Pruder film showing him shots being taken there. And we see other images like this one here as well. The manhole cover. Police officers are trying to figure out where these shots came from. And we can see it was taken at 1239 up here on the sign. You know, he's trying to figure out where these bullet holes, you know, these shots came from. You know, and uh, he's pointing over towards the uh, Texas School Book Depository. But when I line these shots up, okay, both of these shots actually line back up to the rooftop of the county records building. Okay, by the angle of each one of these shots. Then, when I was going over some more, and now when I went to go over the Spruder film again and stuff, that's when I found the gunman, as you see some of the frames right here, the gunman and sprocket holes that was fired from the county records building on the rooftop. But, I want to point this out right here. Okay, we're going back to this image here. Now, as you see here, okay, we have down here below, we have an image of the curb where James Tagg was standing. Okay, now they marked that down in the history books and in the records and the documents that a distraction, I mean a miss shot, they call it a miss shot, struck right there. But if you look at it, it's kind of like, why would somebody have a shot way down here when the limo was up in this location up here? Okay. Then I sit there and I start looking at this and start piecing this together because this is where Gumman was at on the rooftop of the county records building, which he took these distracted shots coming along here. And then we have a Gumman right here on the second floor window of the county records building, which took two distracted shots as well. He took one to the side of steps here, which we see here, which I'm going to zoom in so people can see this. Okay. First, we go to James Teague where he was standing. Okay. We see. The bullet print mark right here on the curb. This is where he was standing at. Then we could go over here, and as you see here in frame uh, 416 of the Spruder film, there's a bullet striking and ricocheting off of the lamp post on the sign of the lamp post. It was right here in this location. Then we have from the much more film where we can see a shot strike right here. This guy spreads apart. This guy starts running up the hill, uh, up the stairwell there. And this guy right here turns around and starts running up the stairwell. We see in a much more film, and we also see in um, Nick's film, Norville Nick's film. That occurred right in this location right here. Now, like I said, what compels me the most is, as you see here, I'll show you a frame that shows a bullet striking the sign on the lamppost here. I'll show you from the film, or the much more film, of a bullet striking here. And then we all know about the curb shot here. But I want to show people this, and this is what really intrigues me. I mean, really gets me not understanding other people's research. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still fighting this uh, flu. I'm sitting here, okay, and I'm looking at this map alone itself. And if you look at this, okay, you're going to see just for, we're going to just talk about the manhole cover. Excuse me for a minute. We're going to talk about the manhole cover here for a minute. And look how much evidence has always been in front of the public's eyes. I mean, you're telling me that out of the 50 plus years that any other researcher can now sit there and say, well, why are they looking at this manhole cover in this image? Or why are they looking at this manhole cover in this image? Just like that, why did they take a picture of that manhole cover that night, you know, of the assassination? Why is there images showing a man picking up a bullet in this location if there was no sh extra shots fired that day or anything else. But this, no other researcher comes up with these questions like, why did they take this or why did they take that? But in the research I do is I don't sit there, I come up with a question and I look for the answers. Okay. Right here, I can show you an image of a gunman, I mean, of a Secret Service agent picking a bullet in a grass here from this location. Show you from the Spruder film, shot striking and hitting and bullet ricocheting to this location here of the manhole cover. An image of the manhole cover taken that very night of the same assassination. One, two, three, four images of Secret Service agents, police officers, and everything else looking at the manhole cover and retrieving the bullet. Excuse me, 
from the grass area, trying to figure out which direction this bullet came from. Okay, this shot. Okay, this has been in front of the public's eye for 50 plus years, but no other researcher could have figured this out. No other researcher could figure this out. They claim they analyze the films. They claim they analyze all the films and images. Uh, they claim they even send it out to profesh professionals to look over them and stuff, but none of them never found none of this. None of them. And it's always been in front of the public's eye for 50 plus years. Okay? Everybody's worried about what documents they held back instead of looking and concentrate more on what evidence that's already presented over the last 50 years. Okay? It doesn't matter what they're holding back now. Not all the matters of what we have now that we have to look at. Like I said, look at how much evidence is here compelled together. Photographic evidence that we can see, we can touch, we can feel, and everything else. Even the manhole cover today, we can go there today, touch one bullet hole, touch another bullet hole. We can make plaster cast of it and stuff like that. You know, a lot of things can be done. But researchers won't point this out. Just like when I talk to other researchers and stuff like that. They contacted me back and they'll say, you know, you it seems like you really went in depth into doing this research. Okay, but to me, that's what we call research. You do research, you dig and you dig and you dig until you find them answers. But when they're presented with this evidence and they're shown this evidence, because remember, all researchers out there, all JFK researchers are looking for evidence to prove a conspiracy happened. The only way you can prove a conspiracy happened if you can show evidence of more than three shots taken. Okay, I have that evidence. I've always had that evidence ever since I started this case. Okay, and I presented this evidence over the past 12 years. However, researchers and stuff, they look at it, they're gonna say, what is it in it for me? And if there's nothing in it for them, then they're not going to tell nobody about this evidence. So that makes me starting to think sometimes as well of who's doing all the cover up. Because everybody in the JFK world, JFK assassination stuff, knows about this evidence and sees this evidence, but they don't want to present none of this evidence because it was not found by them, it was found by me. So if they say, well, if he's right about this, you know, I actually had a JFK researcher tell me, well, I can't back you because if I say you're right about this, okay then i would have to say i'm wrong and i'm not gonna say i'm wrong okay i had somebody tell me this over the phone and i said you know it's understandable i told him it's understandable i'm not going to say nothing about it you know it's understandable uh, you know because that person also asked me could i use their research into my research to see if we could piece it together but i said there was no way but I just want to present evidence that I find and, you know, explain what don't make sense to me. Like when I look over this evidence here, you know, I see this Pruder film. We see the gunman up on the rooftop of the county record bureau and taking his shots. We see a gunman hanging out of the window as it was coming down Houston Street in the Bell film. Okay, we see him holding a rifle and everything else. And we also, I also point out, I found in other films like the Much More film. I know the Hughes film stuff, we can see shots fired from this window right here where this gunman was at. And in a much more film, and I show, you know, the shot being uh, taken right here by the steps. Spruder film, I show the shot striking a lamppost, the manhole cover, grass area. You know, all this has been in front of the public's eye. And it just makes me think a lot and it makes me sit back and I do a lot of sit back and thinking about when I do research, I sit back and it just makes me wonder, they want to make this claim, but where's their evidence at? But when I sit there and look at these films and these images, you know, it makes me think, well, look at all this evidence here. Why haven't they found it? Okay. But I wanted to make this video here to show there is evidence to show there was conspiracy, as you see here in front of you. Well, actually, it's behind me on my uh, monitor. There is photographic evidence to show, which proves there was a conspiracy happened, which proves there was more than one shot fired. Now, what I also want to point out as well is when we look at these shots, 
Okay. We can see that 9, 10, 11, 12, and 7 shot came from the record top rooftop of the county records building because that's all in the same line of fire. Just like when the shot was taken to the curb where James Tag was standing at. I, I don't understand that, you know, by researchers or even investigators or anybody's doing, you know, investigate this case when it first happened is, okay, we have a shot here that happened where the curb is right here. We have two shots right here to the manhole cover. And when you line them up and you look at the angles of them, they're right in the same line of fire. And they're going to say, well, wait a minute. I would have, if I was if I was live back then and I was part of the investigation team, I would have brought this out years ago. I would say, hey, these both shots line up to the rooftop of the county records building. This uh, curb shot also lines up to the rooftop of the county records building. I would have went up there. Remember, there was a bullet casing found on the rooftop of the county records building in 1975 by a gentleman that was working on the rooftop there. He found a bullet casing. Okay which they should have found these bullet casings years ago by doing this, okay? Bullet casings should have already been found years ago, but it was 1975, and this is 10, uh, 12 years after the assassination of JFK when that bullet case was found, 12 years after. So that shows there was evidence still there in Dilly Plaza 12 years after the assassination, just like today, with them two bullet holes in the manhole cover here. On a concrete and manhole cover. There's evidence still right there today in Dilly Plaza. 54 years later, there's still evidence there. Now, the shots to the grass area still might even be there as well. Okay. The bullet that ricocheted off of that sign had to land in the grass uh, dirt there somewhere. And we know there's two bullets laying in the grass area in this location here because the bullet's striking there, unless they dug them up already. But if they dug them up, then why didn't they? Get the bullet case in here. Like I said, there's plenty of evidence even still there today at Dilly Plaza. But I also want to point out this. What a lot of people don't know is there was a lot of people in jeopardy there that day. And as you see here, I piece this up, you know, put this together and everything else. And we look at the crossfires and everything else. We got Mary Mormon in them right here and Gene Hill. We have Alt Gen right here. We have the manhole cover here, grass area here, curb shot here. Sign on lamppost here. Steps right here. We got JFK being shot at. Mary Mormon, Gene Hill, Alt Gen, and Newman family was all in the middle of this crossfire, as you see here. We have the Newmans here. Okay. So Prudy wasn't in a crossfire. He was all right. But the only ones that was truly more in danger than anybody else there that day was the Newmans, Mary Mormon, Gene Hill, and all Jim, because they were, and this gentleman right here, because they was all in a crossfire and they was in a line of fire. Bullets was flying over their head and they didn't even know it that day. That's what I, more... When I look at do research and stuff like that, and I start putting this and piecing this together and everything else, it makes me wonder how many people was in jeopardy that day. That's why I had to look at this, and I was like, well, you know, I want to put these locations down, see who was actually more in jeopardy than anybody else was by the way these shots were taken and by the locations these shots were taken. And come to find out, Alt Jen and this guy right here, Alt Jen, this guy right here, Gene Hill, Mary Mormon, and the Newman family, they was more in danger of getting hit by one of the shots than anybody else that was there that day. And I uh, think I sent an email to Mary Mormon one time about this, you know, I know I posted on Facebook about how much danger that these people had more in danger, their lives was in danger than anybody else there that day. But I want to make this video here to let everybody know that the evidence has always been there okay but no one's never took the time trying to piece this together that's why i spent so long in this on this case because just like right here here's that manhole cover for whoever out there that's in the dallas area or lives in tech stuff you want to go see this evidence it's still there today as i pointed out here's the manhole cover here's locations right across from where mr spruden was standing at 
just down a little bit and there's a bullet hole right in this location here which I'll zoom in to give you the exact location okay here's one bullet hole here okay there's one bullet hole right here this is the bullet hole here and then a uh, bullet uh, ricocheted upward and this is where they found the bullet in this location right here bullet flew up and landed in this location here this is where they was picking up the bullet from here it was in this location here but there was a shot taken here and a shot taken here. Thank you, and don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And tell your friends about us. Thank you, and have a pleasant day.